Welcome back everybody, Silas here today and we're off on another adventure. Now just to preface on this video, things out here are not the same as the last time you saw it out here. This video is going to be a little bit out of order. I've got a bunch of other videos I recorded before this one, but those aren't going to post until after this one. I'm going a little bit out of order because just that's just the way it works out sometimes when you're a YouTuber. So if you notice something in the background that looks radically different than the last time you saw it, don't worry, I'm not going to mention it, I'm not going to talk about it, that's for another video another day. Those videos will start coming out here in about a week or two. Now that being said, I've got some stuff i got to do. i got a car that sold, a truck that sold, I've got to dig those out. They're coming to get those in a couple days, so I need to have them ready to go. I just got back with this truck here, and this is not what I expected when I bought this thing. This was at an auction in Inman, Kansas. It's a little tiny town not far from here, about 20-25 minutes away from here. And I saw it there, there was a couple old farm trucks, so I just left a bid on them. There was only one picture of each of them. No, it was one picture of both of them together, that's right, I'm sorry. And I thought, you know, I don't know what condition they're in, so I just left, you know, junk scrap farm truck bid on them. I didn't expect it to be anything super nice, I didn't even expect to get them. And I didn't get one of them, it was a 68, I think, it was missing a door, it was super rusty, really rough truck. And uh, for whatever reason, it actually sold for more than what I left a bid for it. Somebody must have had to have that one. But this one here, I actually got for $200 under my max bid. So I was pretty excited about that. I thought, you know, this would be a good one. I can chop the nose off of it, maybe sell the cab to Terry, so on and so forth. But then when I got there and saw it, I was like, well, maybe we're not going to be cutting this one up. Check this thing out. Got super nice tires on the back, like new got pretty nice tires on the front and when I got there the truck wasn't sitting where it was in the pictures and I thought oh they drug it out for me and I said oh you drug it out for me I appreciate that thank you that'll save me having to back around the building and they said uh no we didn't drag it out we drove it out and I said you drove it out and he said yeah I said I didn't even know it ran and he said it sure does it runs perfect 77,000 original miles runs like a top. It's got a 327 under the hood and it's the factory 327 which in 66 and older is a much better engine than the 67 and newer 327s. I, I say much better. It's not much better but it is better. But it runs absolutely perfect. It's almost out of gas. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. Only thing wrong with it there we go. Only thing wrong with it is that it, the uh, brakes when you hit the brakes they go almost to the floor before they start working and then they don't work for very long so it pretty much doesn't have brakes that's pretty much typical for these old farm trucks but i mean almost no rust in this truck rock solid above the windshield the floors are good in it cab corners are good it's good everywhere only rust is down in the corners of the doors it's got a little bit of rust but i'm sure it's been repainted at some point in time but it does look good that's for sure just an all-around good truck. This is a really nice truck. And so for, I mean, I got it basically for just over scrap price. So I'm very, very happy with it. The bed works and everything. So I'm going to try to find a home for the whole thing. I've already got a guy pretty interested. Um, if it's sold already by the time this video comes out, I will put that on the screen. But if you don't see that on the screen, this truck is available for sale. I'm probably looking to get somewhere around 3500 for this truck. As is where it is with no brakes. They're supposed to mail me the title here in a week or two. But yeah, an absolutely beautiful truck. I am very, very pleased. I'm going to drive it forward, and I'll probably park it over here in the trees or something for now. Get it out of the way. As you may remember, there, may, there used to be a bunch of cars right here, and those cars are gone. But like I say, we're not going to talk about that. That's for another video another day. All right, it is lunchtime. We're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to show you something you have not seen yet. I added something to the junkyard cabin. Voila. We have a microwave in here. It's way too hot to be cooking on the wood stove. So I grabbed my EcoFlow, stuck it in here, and I uh, don't tell my wife, but I stole the microwave from home. No, we were wanting to upgrade anyway. I've actually had this microwave since before I got married, and I've been married for over 10 years now. But anyway, you guys know me. When it's time to eat, normally I run to an unhealthy fast food place, and I eat junk food. Sometimes I don't eat at all, which isn't always healthy either. So now having this microwave out here, I can have some much healthier options that I can bring with me in my cooler. And that brings me to today's sponsor, which is Factor. Now one of the main things that sold me on Factor is just how simple they are. They're delivered straight to your door and they're fresh, never frozen. All you gotta do is slide off the cardboard sleeve, then you just poke some holes in it, stick it in the microwave, and then you put it in for two minutes. 
once it's out of the microwave, you just let it sit for a couple more minutes. But while that's cooling down, I want to talk to you guys about this stuff right here. I think there was a strawberry banana, there was a, a tropical fruit, but by far the mango is my favorite. They're all good, but this mango smoothie is absolutely delicious. All right, this has been sitting for a minute, so we're going to go ahead and open it up. Factor has over 34 chef-prepared weekly options, and they've got options that fit whatever lifestyle you live. If you want vegan options, they've got vegan options. If you want keto options, they've got keto options. If you're like me and you just want delicious options, they've got delicious options. Right now I'm eating the garlic and herb chicken, but I think my favorite so far has been the Parmesan chicken. Super convenient. I don't have to drive all the way into town and deal with long lines at restaurants, trying to go through a drive through anything like that. Plus, on top of all that, these are actually cheaper than what I usually get at fast food restaurants anyway. Okay, now I'm trying to shoot a promo. What's going on here? I just had a bird fly into my bus. <laughs> don't hurt yourself. I'm going to open the window or try to show you out. Come here, Mr. Bird. Don't hurt yourself anymore. Let go. He doesn't want to let go. I'm trying to save his life. There we go. Well, that was an unexpected turn of events. <laughs> I, I tell you what, you just never know what's going to happen out here. But anyway, back to the topic at hand. I like Factor. It's really good food, very affordable, super convenient. Go to factor75.com or check out the link in the description below. Use my code AMFS50 to get 50% off your first order. That's Factor75.com and use code AMFS50 to get 50% off. Thanks again to Factor for making videos like this possible. Now let's get back to work. You gotta come over here now. One of the vehicles I gotta get out is a little sob. I'm not gonna actually set it out till tomorrow. But while I'm back here, I need to take pictures of these hog feeders. I've got that one there. And I've got these three here. I've had these forever. And what I was gonna do with them is separate the rings. And if you separate the rings, and you take and you cut these Pride of the Farm out and the plus 10 and the 40 BU cast iron trough, something like whatever it says there, they've all got, most of them have writing on them. Yeah, most of them say Pride of the Farm on them. But the Pride of the Farm section there, when you cut that out, is worth a ton of money. That's about a $200 piece on each of these. And then these other pieces are about 50 to 100 bucks a piece. But I have a guy that wants to buy them complete, just like they are. So I priced them accordingly and just said, you know what, this is what I'll take for all of them and I don't have to do any work besides set them on your truck. And he said he'll probably take them, but he wants some better pictures of them. That was pretty quick, truck is sold. However, he does not want the whole truck. It's going to Terry. He does want the cab, the motor, all of that stuff. So what he wants me to do is he wants me to cut the rear end out of it and take the bed and all the hydraulics and stuff off the back of it to make it lighter. That way it'll be kind of like a glider to where he'll have the whole frame, but he'll still have the transmission, the motor, all that stuff all still complete with the truck. Because where it's going, no one's ever gonna use it for a grain truck anyway, but they are gonna want all of that stuff to go with the cab and they'll put it on a different chassis. So he'll just keep it together that way. Kind of the same thing we did on the uh, blue truck over there. That rear end is cut loose in that, so when I pick it up, the rear end will just stay there and the rest of the truck will be separate. I just checked the radar and off to the east of us is getting hammered. I mean, about 20 minutes to the east of us <laughs> is getting hammered with rain and hail. It's pretty severe thunderstorms rolling through, but nothing here yet. And I don't think it's gonna be coming here. We might get a couple little showers on the edge of it, but I don't think we're gonna get much of anything over here. But I got that truck dug out. I got a few other things done. Uh, like I say, I'm not gonna talk about those things. I'm gonna leave it a mystery. But I got a lot done and I got this car in the other day. I actually got this in about four or five days ago now. 
and you can see a window's broken out. What the deal was is this car was abandoned. They left it behind. The guy was deceased that had it. And I don't know all the details about the whole situation. I don't know if the landlord claimed the car or if the family went and got the car. I don't, I don't know for sure what was going on there. But my dad is the one that went and picked the car up. And he said while he was there, they knocked out the window and there were two ARs laying on the seat, just laying on the seat in plain sight. And the guy was a collector, I guess, and I guess he had a bunch of them in the house too, but he had two laying on the seat of his car. So they grabbed those out of there and they said there might be more stuff in the trunk. They didn't know what all was in there, but the city was on them to get rid of it. They had to get rid of it. So they didn't pop the trunk because they didn't have keys. So just now I popped the trunk open with the loader. Let's see what's in there. As you can see, the car is pretty well cleaned out. They went through it pretty good. They popped up the back seat and everything, making sure they got everything out of it. But like I say, they did not have keys for this. They popped out the lock cylinder, but on these here, that doesn't work because the latch is all the way over here and the key works in there. But if you take the key out, there's no way of doing it through there. So this is what we got. Now I've already popped the trunk open and I glanced in here, saw what was in here. You can see right away, there's a bunch of stuff in here. So I just stopped what I was doing and I said, I've got to get this on camera. I give you my word, I have not dug through this trunk. I have no clue what all we're going to find in here. All I know is what I saw on top and I said, that's enough for me. We're going to do a treasure hunt. First up, we've got a set of tools and what size are we missing? It looks like we are missing. I can't tell. It doesn't specify what size is supposed to be in there, but I'm guessing that's either a 12 or a 13 millimeter that's gone. But it's still a 10 millimeters in there and a bunch of other ones so definitely that's good for a little emergency set of cheap tools whenever you want to use a tool that you might break it's good to have little sets like this around so we'll start setting stuff down here found that in the dirt a minute ago that's kind of neat or do old door roller we got here an empty jug anything in this yep this is clear full of tools let's get this out and see what we got hard to do one-handed this thing's heavy we got some ratcheting wrenches. Craftsman even. There you go. These are the swivel head ratcheters here. This one isn't a Craftsman. Got a 5 8 and a 11 16 and a little stubby 17. Little stubby, whatever that is. Oh, it's 8, it looks like. So yeah, a couple Craftsmen. Oh, there's a swivel 10. That's a good one. Looks like we got a bunch of goodies in here. Is this a, oh, this is a little uh, magnetic one of those deals that you can put on a drill or whatever and that way you can put it at a weird angle and it still works i'm sure they're just a gimmick but for like light duty screws they work okay but for anything heavy duty they just snap or they don't work very well got a bunch of nipex i don't even know what brand that is if that's good or not they don't seem like they're real high quality but just for like i say emergency tools they'll work okay there's an ace five eighths bunches of ratcheting wrenches in here all different sizes i think every wrench in here is a ratcheting one oh there's some more craftsmen there got a three eighths and a five sixteenths five eighths i already saw that one i guess here's another stubby one here a 15 another craftsman three eighths screwdrivers some screwdrivers and then what do we got here this is professional quality I don't know. the Weeha premium tools hmm it's interesting I don't know how good quality that is but once again emergency tools I saw one more pair of pliers down in here what in the world are those it says 25 to 65 millimeters some sort of funky pliers I don't even know what those are I'm sure they have a purpose, but I don't know what the purpose is. A pair of cutters. So all sorts of good stuff in there. I guess we'll keep digging this direction. A couple wheel chucks that are kind of collapsed. <laughs> don't know if I trust those very much, so I probably won't mess with those. Flashlight. Doesn't look like a very good one. Still works though. Got a cheap ratchet here. crescent wrench does it work it's kind of rusty yet yeah, still works we'll save that another ratcheting wrench 15 millimeter let's see what's in this and more wrenches we got another ratcheting 10 millimeter there bunch of safety glasses let's go ahead and get those out now because I don't need those I got plenty of safety good safety glasses another ratchet a few more wrenches and a couple lug nuts 
and a spark plug socket. And then, what? oh, is this a uh, oil filter remover? Is that what this is? I think this is an oil filter remover. Pretty sure that's what that is. Moving on, we've got another ratchet. We have, the screwdriver's gone, but there's a bunch of bits for it. Looks like a brand new brake rotor. And a screwdriver. And that looks like about it down there. I don't see anything else. So now I can take all of this garbage and put it back over there. Okay, and this is mainly what I saw when I opened this trunk, because I saw these laying right here on top. I have no clue what these are or what they go to. Now this one here looks like it's more for like a 22. It's stylized to make it look like these, but these are probably for an AR, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but they look like 5.56 mags. They look pretty old, so I'm, I don't know what exactly was inside the car, but judging by these, I'm guessing whatever was inside the car was pretty old as well. If I remember right, M16 is the same as an AR-15 as well. I, I could be off on that, but I think they're both 5.56 NATO. So we'll definitely set all these aside. Let's see what else we can find. This crate's kind of falling apart on me. I'll have to take everything out of here. Rubber mallet. Definitely seen better days. Probably not going to save that. There's a ball peen hammer. That's usable. We'll save that. Some broken and rusted carb cleaner. Little mini sledge. We'll definitely hang on to that. What do we got here? Another wrench. Is it a three quarter? It's a three quarter. I'm always needing three quarter wrenches for working on these big trucks when I take them apart. A pair of needle nose vice grips. They're kind of rusty, but they're also super oily and they still work, so we'll save those. We've got a two and a quarter ton hydraulic jack. Don't know if it works or not. We'll test it out. Here's the handle. It's unscrewed all the way, so we'll see if it works now. Seems to be working. I've got a really nice jack already, but you know, just for one to throw out here in the bus or in the shop or something, be handy. What do we got in here? Looks like a spark plug socket and a little extension. There's a puddle of oil in the trunk of this car. And what else we got down here? A screwdriver. I'm trying not to get super oily. It's the end of the day and I've managed to stay halfway clean today. So and there's a little bit driver, a couple sockets, another socket. So yeah, a few odds and ends. I think we have here a tire tool. Is that what this is? Lock ring tool? Oh, like lock ring off of truck tires, I'm guessing. But yeah, that might come in handy. Looks like a jack stand down here. Looks like it's still in the box. Got a brand new tire in here too. I'll have to get it out, see what the date code is on it. If it's not too old, probably can sell that. I'm fixing to learn you something, so pay attention here. You find the date code right here. You find the DOT, and it'll have four numbers in a little circle on them. And what the 26 stands for is that's the week of the year. So it was the 26th week of 2010 is when this tire was made. So this tire is roughly 13 years old. A lot of the tire shops around here won't even touch a tire as far as mounting a tire on a rim for you if it's over seven years old. So you would have to mount this tire yourself. It is a really, really nice tire. I mean, it would work great on a trailer or something like that, where it's not like a life or death situation like on a car. I don't know, it's literally brand new. So I guess we'll go ahead and save it and uh, I'll try to find a, a home for it. What do we got here? We got a little, little skillet. Uh, it doesn't look like a Griswold or anything name brand, but you know, somebody might need that for a collection or somebody that messes with skillets. Let's see if the jack stand's still in the box. I think it is. Yeah, it's still just brand new in the box. Never been taken out even, it looks like. We'll set it down here with the jack. It looks like just an El Cheapo jack stand, so I would never trust my life on one of these. But for something just like holding up an old truck to keep it from tacoing all the way in half when I cut the frame or something like that, I'm never underneath the truck when I cut it anyway. So for situations like that, this will work perfect. And if I saw correctly, it looks like, yep, there's one more magazine. They look to be in pretty good shape still. That one has a bunch of duct tape on it for some reason, but that's probably just for grip. Hang on to those for sure. Let's see if there's anything else in here that I missed. But not a bad haul at all. Got a bunch of tools and I mean, they might all be cheap tools, but if you bought those tools new, it's still gonna be quite a bit of money and I'm always losing stuff. So this here is a good set of losable tools. Plus there's a whole bunch of ratcheting wrenches. I'm not sure what sizes are there. Definitely, definitely a pretty good haul. If I was to put a value on all this, as is, where is, there's probably a hundred dollars worth of stuff here. I'm not gonna lie, I was secretly hoping that we would find a little bit more in this car 
you know what I was thinking. I don't want to say the words because then the algorithm will hear me say the word and then it won't let me monetize this video. <laughs> but that being said, I'm still pretty happy with what we found. Yeah, that door's still locked. I figured I want to double check and make sure they didn't miss anything good. Oh, there's a bunch of money over there. Looks like a dime and a couple nickels maybe other than that I don't see anything in this car I haven't been able to do any treasure hunts for a while just because I haven't been working at the other yard uh, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about it but I'll give you guys a little bit of a sneak preview I have been crushing out here at this yard you can see the crusher in the background you can see a few bundles over there in the background I've been out here now for right out a month now none of the videos have posted of this of this entire process I've been filming everything None of those videos have posted yet. This will be the first one, but here pretty soon there's going to be a whole series all about cleaning this place out. Now I haven't done much of anything off that direction yet, and so that's what I'm going to do the next month. Before I stack this car in the pile, I just wanted to check and see if there's anything else good, and I noticed this book, and I hadn't opened it before, and you guys are not going to believe what I found on the very first page. Would you just look at that? I mean, check that out. Thank you all for all your support. I'm really, really hoping we can hit 100,000 this year so we can get our play button. Don't know if we're gonna hit it quite or not, but in order for that to happen, I'm gonna have to start getting quite a few more subs than what I usually get. But now I'm gonna tinker around with a few things. I've got a guy supposed to be here with the truck, but he got caught in the storms I was talking about earlier. And so he had to pull over and wait because he has a tall load and the wind was ripping and roaring so he couldn't drive down the highway, but I think it's cleared out enough and he'll probably be here soon. So whenever he gets here, I'll show you that truck. There it is, big ugly behemoth. But that's why I wanted it. He was gonna bring it to me without the box on. He had somebody else want the box for storage, but I said, man, it ain't worth much to me without the box. I mean, it's got kind of a cool nose on it for a wall hanger, but uh, the rest of it is uh, super rusty and super junk. Even this door, half the door is putty about to fall off. So really just probably cut the nose off and crush the cab if I were to do that. But all together with this big ugly box on it, perfect attention getter. Hang a banner on that saying I buy old cars or something like that. People won't be able to resist turning their head. And what is that ugly beast over there in the distance? Then they see the sign hanging on it and uh, then they call me and sell me their old cars. Check out the back of this thing. <laughs> Got chain on it that slides over instead of a door. It probably would have had a canvas on it as well, but you just slide the whole thing over out of the way definitely an interesting piece definitely an attention getter I'm sure it leaks it's got rust in the roof it's got rust everywhere but like I say just for an attention getter just for something to advertise catch people's attention this will work good here and you don't want to have the same vehicle out there forever because then people get used to it and they don't notice it anymore so what you want to do is you want to park something like this out there that's super obnoxious and ugly hang a banner on it and then after so much time you take it and you move it in either you sell it you crush it do whatever with it then you park something else out there and you repeat the cycle. I keep saying I'm going to put stuff out there to advertise, but I haven't done it yet just because I'm so insanely busy already without advertising that why would I want to advertise? It's got a lot of good dash parts in it still too. So yeah, I'll be able to get a lot of goodie out of this truck. Use it for that first. And then when I'm done with that, bring it in here and chop it up, part it out, crush the rest. You know, honestly, whenever I do get around to crushing it, that old Fruhoff bed, Somebody will probably buy that anyway. That's a pretty old bed. That's probably old, as old as the truck, probably late 50s, early 60s. But with that, I am going to head out. It has been a long day. It's about 7.30 now. I've been at it for uh, 13 and a half hours, so I'm a little bit on the tired side. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there, find an adventure. We'll see you on the next one.